Hey everyone. So I recently had a need to do some functions inside of an Intex workflow, cloud workflow, specifically uh, in regards to pad left and pad right. Now, there's nothing in there that will actually do that out of the box. So I decided I'm gonna build a workflow, a component workflow that will do that for me. Now, for those who have experience with on-prem and Intex workflow, you guys know that we already had functions kind of built into that. We'll probably have that in Intex workflow cloud in the near future, but it's not there quite yet. So let's see how we can actually build this to actually be able to do it within the Intex Workflow Cloud right now. So, you guys see my Intex Workflow Cloud environment. I'm gonna show you how I built a pad right, and I'm gonna build a few more functions as well. So let's have a look at what the pad right uh, workflow looks like. So, first off, I'm actually building a component workflow. Essentially, it's a workflow that'll be able to be executed by other workflows. So think of it as like a, like a mini workflow. From the on-prem days, think of it as uh, like a user-defined action. All right, so you can see up at the top here, I've got, it's a component workflow. If I click on it, uh, you'll see you can create variables. I actually have a few that I've created. So essentially, there's some input text, there's the character that I want to pad with, and then what is the actual pad length? So think of it this way. If I provide a value like one, two, three, but I actually expect there to be a bunch of zeros at the end to make it up to be a 10 character string, that's what the pad length is, it's the total length of that uh, text string. So those are the three values that are coming in as input. If I click on workflow, I have a few more uh, variables that I'm using throughout the workflow, but there's also this one, which is output text. That's the actual output that is uh, going to be sent out. All right, so let's have a look how we actually built this out. I haven't gone through my personal best practices, which is renaming these actions to, uh, to be a little bit more descriptive, but there's not that many of them here, so I'm gonna just go through each one of them. So the first thing I'm doing is I'm actually creating a copy of the input text, storing it in the output text, right? That's just all that is. Then what I'm doing is I need to figure out how many characters are there in the original length of that input text. And that's what this apply regular expression is. Basically says, take that input text, extract every single individual character, including non-alpha numeric characters. So commas, spaces, brackets, all that sort of stuff. And I'm storing that in a collection variable called collection characters. Then I have a count items in collection action. So that's gonna go and say, how many items are there actually in that collection? And I'm gonna store that in int character count. So as you can see, for my internal workflow variables, as I'm using them throughout my workflow, I've got the actual type of the variable at the beginning. It helps me understand you know, exactly uh, what variable I'm dealing with. Okay, the next thing is I have a run if action. Now that's actually checking to see if the input text, if the length of that input text is actually greater than the pad length, then I don't need to do anything, right? I don't need to pad anything because for example, if I need the number of characters to be at least 10 characters and my input text has 15 characters, well, of course, I don't have to do anything. So that's really all this run if true. It's basically just saying if the input character count is less than the pad length, then we want to actually go and do this work. So next thing we do is we're doing a calculation. We're taking the total pad length we're subtracting, subtracting the current character length, so the current length of that string that was inputted, and that gives us the number of characters that we need to then add, or the number of padded characters we need to add to that original input string. Now that we have that, and that's what the int diff is, then we basically just go into this loop, and the loop is just saying continue looping while int diff does not equal to zero. And of course, whenever you have any condition like that, make sure you have an action inside the loop that modifies that particular variable. So in my case, I'm gonna just skip over this create action. If you look at the last action in the loop, this calculated value is actually taking that int diff, subtracting one and storing that back in the int diff. So if I need say four characters, it's gonna go in there and say, oh, four is not equal to zero. Do what I need to do, then subtract one. Back through the loop, oh, it's equal to three now. Do what's in the loop, subtract one, etc. until it gets to zero. Now, so this will essentially go through the number of times I need to add characters to the right side of this input string. And then the important action is right here, create a text string, which essentially all we're doing is we're adding that pad character that was inputted to us. We're appending it to the output text and storing it back in the output text. 
And the reason why we're using that and not input text, and that is why we have this first action up here, which is store the input in the output, right? So essentially we're saying, if I'm passing in one, two, three, I'm gonna store that in the output. My pad character, let's say is a zero. I'm gonna go through this loop and I'm gonna start off with one, two, three, and I'm gonna append a zero. Now it becomes one, two, three, zero. Then through the loop again, it'll become one, two, three, zero, zero. And it'll keep adding zeros until we've reached the end of the loop, and then we'll jump out. And because we're updating this output text, and if I look at the variables, output text is, uh, let's go into here, is uh, my output variables. You can see the little checkbox there for output. Then now we know that that's actually what's going to go back to the calling workflow or the calling piece of code that you have. All right, that's basically it. Now, what we're gonna do, is we're gonna go back to the beginning and we're gonna actually start this workflow. So that was the actual component workflow. So something's going to call that. Let's have a look at this workflow. This is my little test workflow. So you can see I'm using a caller workflow action. You'll see this updated in a moment. It should say pad right in a moment. There you go. I had to make sure that I check this box, which is wait for this workflow to complete before continuing. And the reason why I need to do that is because if you do the run both workflows concurrently, essentially what's gonna happen is this parent workflow is going to end before the child workflow ends. So we don't actually get any data back. So we need to wait for the child workflow to finish and we're gonna store the output in output text. So you can see I'm passing in one, two, three, four, five. My pad character is zero. My pad length is 10. And I can go back right here and I can say there's my test functions that's the the workflow we're just looking at I'm going to manually start this and in a moment you'll see I'm going to jump into instances this will actually show you all the kind of running instances so you'll see that there is the parent workflow running there's a child workflow running uh, these ones actually finished oh that was from a previous run so let's let's refresh that and you'll see in a moment you know, what the output actually looks like. All right. So let's just have a look. We'll have a look at this is a previous run. So this was a previous run that I ran. You can see it went through, ran all the actions. And you can see there's groupings of actions. So you can see this is actually a loop. So it's going through uh, and running all those. And then if I jump to the actual parent workflow to see what the output looks like, so there you go, it just finished right there. So there's a test functions. I'm gonna click on this instance and you can see it logged the results. So I passed in one, two, three, four, five. My total length was 10. It added five more zeros to the right. All right, so there you go. That's an easy way to kind of build out something that you guys might need that isn't necessarily available out of the box, but you can still do it with building a component workflow uh, to reuse uh, some of that uh, functionality that you guys have. Of course, there are other ways of doing this. You could potentially write an Azure function, build an extension around that and call that. There are pros and cons for doing it both ways, right? Uh, I like to do it this way, mainly because I love the idea of having a no-code solution, uh, but there's nothing wrong with deciding to say, I'm gonna build an Azure function, I'm gonna expose that as a REST endpoint, I'm gonna build a Nintex Workflow Cloud extension that becomes an action in my workflow designer, which I could just drag and drop. It'll be called pad right or pad left or whatever you call it. it has some input parameters, has an output parameter, uh, and it will do uh, the same sort of work for you. Uh, the good thing about doing it this way is that you don't necessarily have to be a developer to build this sort of stuff out. All right, if you have any questions, definitely reach out to me, but I hope you found this useful.